Hi everybody, it's Miss Knutson. Before we get started with today's art lesson, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like what we do today for our art lesson, give me a like and leave a comment below. Today we are going to do a lesson that involves studying Jean-Michel Basquiat's style and how he created his artwork, the content, the history, all sorts of methods he used to create some of his most popular pieces. Let's get started with talking about what supplies we're going to need for our Jean-Michel Basquiat storytelling lesson. Today, you are going to need these supplies. You're going to need paper. Big paper is good. The paper I use is 12 inches by 18 inches. You're going to need black, black opaque paint. So gouache, tempera, acrylic, those are all good examples. You are going to need pencils for sketching out ideas. I also am going to use um, oil pastels. Now remember the oil pastel is like a waxier crayon. So it's not going to be chalky and dusty. It's going to be more waxy like a crayon. Once you've gathered all these supplies, we can get started with our Basquiat storytelling picture. If you would like the full lesson to go along with my explanation today, please check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store. It will give history about uh, what a pictogram is, what the storytelling picture or pictogram will be, and um, how they're used throughout art history, and also a full list of the supplies, how to use them, and, and the steps. Check the link in the description to find my Teachers Pay Teachers store, and you can download the full lesson there. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to start a pictogram is you have to think of a story you're going to tell in one picture. It's not a comic strip where you just have blocks that go in a sequence. That's not a pictogram. A pictogram is a picture that tells you all sorts of things in the same space, much like a collage of images that all focus on one subject or one story. A pictogram tells you a bit of history, a bit of personal background philosophy, maybe emotions tied to those things. Jean-Michel Basquiat used the technique of a pictogram in more of a modern day history. As we study uh, how Basquiat communicated, you can also use his technique to create a pictogram of your own. So first you have to think of a story. Use some brainstorming time to come up with an idea. Come up with symbols. Come up with words, descriptive words. How can you tell a story in one picture? Okay. Once you've brainstormed about your main character and different ideas, descriptive words, symbols that will go with your main character, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a silhouette of your main character on your page. You will need your black opaque paint and you're going to create an opaque silhouette, almost like a shadow of your main character. So once you create your main character on your page, um, fill in the silhouette of your main character with your black opaque paint. You're going to need to let it dry, 
But while you let it dry, you can work in the surrounding areas around your character, the background areas, and you can sketch with a pencil different ideas, different words, different symbols that tell us about your main character. All right. So whether they have a conflict that they are overcoming or whether you are describing who they are, you can fill that in in the background space. Jean-Michel Basquiat used the background and negative space of his artwork to communicate the history, the emotions, the background of where his uh, character is going, who they are, maybe what their name is. And so using your negative space, the background, around your main character, take your pencil and draw some shapes, some words, some patterns that repeat. Use the negative space to start telling your story. Think of the emotions that your character is having. Think of where they're coming from, different expressions they might have. Repeat different shapes and patterns. But the next thing I'm going to do, now that I've filled in my background with different words and shapes and patterns, I'm going to use my oil pastels to fill in some of the shapes and create outlines that I will paint in with color later. With the colors I have here, I'm going to go over some of my pencil lines. I'm also going to consider if I want to fill in any of the shapes with the oil pastel color. I'm also going to use some colored pencils. If you want any fine lines, you can use some colored pencils as well. Next thing you can do to your Basquiat storytelling picture is to create some colorful lines using oil pastels where you've already sketched out your ideas. So spend some time and um, fill in those spaces. All right, once you have filled in your background, here's my background. Once you have filled it in, you can um, kind of step back and see if you like how you filled in all of your areas. Basquiat loved to use different textures on his surfaces. So one way you can mimic that is by filling in some of your shapes um, with a really rough value texture. You can see I use some words to describe my main character and what's going on in this pictogram. And even some words that describe sounds that the character might hear. So uh, those are just some ideas to fill in your space. Once you have finished all of the background shapes and lines, and once your main character's silhouette is dry, I think I have one little wet spot still, then you can go ahead and fill in the background with different colors of watercolor paint. So go ahead and choose some bright colors to a contrast with the dark shape. All right, I've painted my background. All of my shapes are filled in. The last thing we're going to do to make this really look like a Jean-Michel Basquiat storytelling picture is to use a white oil pastel. 
or if you don't have one of those, you can use um, some white opaque paint, like an acrylic. And we're going to do a technique that Basquiat loved to do with a lot of his figures, which is to kind of put a skeleton sort of face on the character. So uh, Basquiat loved studying anatomy. He knew a lot about it. And he would use his uh, techniques of abstract expressionism to put a very abstract and simplified skeleton on some of his faces. As you look at your character, see if you can find the areas where you might want to put the eye sockets and maybe some like teeth. Let me show you an example of one I did that was a raven or a crow. Okay, so this has got a Basquiat style skeleton to it. Okay, so it has the sort of mouth line with some sort of teeth and then some eyes and then maybe some eye socket description. Use your imagination and also what you know about the skeleton to see if you can put some bones like x-ray vision inside of your character. If you want to sketch with a pencil first, that is a very wise choice. So let's get started with that part. Once you have your skeleton done, you can see how it looks a lot like Jean-Michel Basquiat's artwork. If you really enjoyed this lesson, then make sure to check out the, the complete PDF file that I have to offer in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. It will give you more history, it will give you more visual aids, it will tell you how to implement this lesson with lots of different ideas and age groups. You can do this lesson with kids as young as five or six. You can also use this lesson for high school students to challenge them to use symbolism and storytelling in their artwork. And that is a very important thing to know as an artist. Jean-Michel Basquiat is a very good artist to study, to learn how to bridge that gap between abstract expressionism and more symbolic communication. We study a lot of dead European guys in art history, and I think this lesson will help refresh your students' mindset as to who is influential in art history. A lot of artists do not get celebrated, and Jean-Michel Basquiat, although he is well known and he has broken records as to how much money people have paid for his artwork, it's pretty amazing. Lots of money. This is a really fun lesson, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I would love to see what you made. Find me on Facebook and Instagram. Those links are below. And if you have a comment, or if you like this lesson, please leave a comment, hit that like button. And if you enjoy these art history lessons with an activity and uh, joining me and Tessa, then please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends. I'm here for you guys. If you need unique art lessons that teach unique concepts and unique artists. Thanks guys. And we will see you next time.